uh, SolidWorks Visualize. Um, again, we're going to get uh, we're going to show you all the basics that you need so that you uh, can get started with the application. But uh, but we do uh, we do always uh, recommend training uh, if you want to learn the in depth capabilities and you're using it all the time. Um, but you should know enough from this webinar to be dangerous, right? To start making oh, renderings awesome. and uh, and create some cool content. Um, so let's uh, get going here. Uh, just a little bit about Javelin Technologies for those of you who uh, who are newer to us. Uh, we are a Canadian reseller of uh, SolidWorks, the largest Canadian reseller, and uh, we're coast to coast. We have six offices coast to coast. Um, we're just we're just actually moving in Vancouver. We used to be in Surrey, and we're moving to downtown uh, uh, Vancouver, which is exciting. And uh, we're about 80 people and tons of technical talents and certifications to to keep you well supported um, and knowledgeable on on the products that we offer. Uh, so myself, uh, Eric Van Essen, I've been here for, uh, geez, 11 years now and, uh, and excited to, uh, to oversee our product portfolio. And uh, with me we have? Uh, Scott Ellery. I unfortunately have not been here 11 years yet, but um, I am excited to be showing you some of the great capabilities. But, but you will be, right? 11 years I will from be. Now. <laughs> at, in, in about nine and a half years from now, I will be been here for 11 years yeah. and I'll be very excited. <laughs> Perfect. Um, all right. So let's, uh, what do we got next? Got... Oh, a little game, a little right? Teaser. Oh, cool. I just, uh, so Scott put together a game. Actually, maybe you can explain the game. Yeah, the well. first the first thing I like to do at any any kind of webinar or meeting is trick people. Um, <laughs> so this is a is, is a little game uh, that we put together. We have one uh, real image, and we have one uh, image that was made in Visualize. So already you can see they're very similar, but I like people to guess. And uh, because we're not all in the same room, uh, this is a, a good time for you to kind of just think in the back of your brain, is it the left one that's that's the render, or is it the, the right one that's the render? Uh, and I'm going to give you just a second, uh, and then we'll see, and it's the left one that's a render. So the right one is a real photograph. So if I tricked you, don't feel too bad. I had a really hard time differentiating when I first saw these, and it kind of blew me away. Uh, that is unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, with SolidWorks Visualize, um, it, it's got a few in, uh, performance uh, enhancements over um, other rendering uh, softwares uh, because it can utilize your GPU to render. Uh, you've probably heard about this. Uh, if you've heard anything about Visualize, the big thing is GPU rendering. Um, and to put it into perspective, uh, on a 10-second render, uh, on normal GPU rendering, uh, which would be PhotoView 360 and I would say about... 95% of the other rendering tools out there, uh, you're going to get an image that looks something like this. Okay, uh, In the same 10 seconds on a GPU, uh, depending on the amount of CUDA cores that you have, I'll try not to get too nerdy, I promise, <laughs> um, you're looking at a result like that. Okay, So that's, that's and I'm, I'm going to go a little nerd here and then I'll leave it alone, I promise. Uh, that's 2880 CUDA cores. So the more CUDA cores you have, uh, the faster the render is going to go on GPU. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very dramatic difference. Um, so not only better looking images, but faster, right? And that's kind exactly. of, in a nutshell, one of the big driving factors. Um, and to clarify, I think it, it's the iRay technology. Right? It is, yep. It's the, um, it's, it's the iRay technology and the utilization of uh, the uh, NVIDIA CUDA cores. Right, so, so it is limited to NVIDIA to do that. Yes. Um, but you still can get um, high-quality, better-looking images if you don't have NVIDIA. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. You okay. can use any card that you want. Um, it's just if it's not an NVIDIA card, you're not going to have access to that GPU rendering. Okay, good to know. Which so, is, which is a, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a huge benefit so to have. For those of you who selected, I want to create better-looking images and didn't select faster, you still get better-looking images. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Absolutely. All right, well, let's, uh, let's keep trucking along here. So uh, the first thing is, where do we get Visualize from? So if you uh, are currently on subscription, you've got SolidWorks Professional or SolidWorks Premium, um, you already get Visualize Standard included. Um, you just have to go to the customer portal uh, to find it, right? So you, you log into your customer portal, uh, you go to the downloads page, you scroll to the bottom of the screen, and you'll find the SolidWorks Visualize download there. Okay. And the serial number they use, what do they use there? You use your SolidWorks serial number. So if you have, if you have a standalone SolidWorks serial number, uh, you, can, you can enter that serial number. It's going to activate Visualize. Uh, 
and I believe if you have a server uh, or a floating license, um, you call your VAR, uh, which in this case will be us, um, and we'll get you set up. Yeah, there's just a couple things we have to trigger on the back end, I think, yes. right? And then you refresh the license server, and it's available. Yep. So, perfect. All right, so after this webinar, no excuses. Everybody's installing it That's and it. Uh, get it going. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So a little bit about the agenda today on the, on the content. Um, there's kind of a few key areas we wanted to uh, focus on. Um, talk about, like, how do you get your data in to, uh, to visualize? It is, um, it's not an add-in for SOLIDWORKS. It is a standalone application. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're, when you're setting up a rendering, a uh, big part of it is how are you painting it is the terminology we're using. So adding those textures, manipulating materials um, and uh, visuals. And then, of course, you want a good scene set up. So what's the right lighting? What's the scenery in the background to get that, that rendering they, the way you want? And then we'll end off uh, something that we're going to try uh, or we've been trying lately is, is having Scott put together a tip of the day. So uh, just related to, uh, to Visualize Professional. So we're going to dive deep in one of the key capabilities of Visualize Pro, um, learn, how to, learn how to do it and see some uh, really great examples of, of the functionality in action. And it's, it's super secret. Super secret. Super so we don't, we're not going to tell you until, uh, until right at the end, right? That's it. So you have to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep let's get going. All right, so we're going to start off with a scenario. So in this particular scenario, we've got our CAD model, right? We're inside the SolidWorks. We finished designing, in this case, our espresso machine, um, and we just want to be able to make some very nice images, very emotional content that our customers can identify with. Um, and if we just do a quick screen grab or a save as out of SolidWorks like this, it doesn't really scream, "I want an espresso" uh, at this point in time. So we want to take this image. And we want to turn it into something like this, right? We want, we want to be able to add that realistic feel to our model. Um, we might want to add some different angles and some different uh, depth, uh, depths of field to highlight certain features uh, on our product, right? So how do we get there? Well, we use SolidWorks Visualize, so let's pop in there, okay? So I'll just open up uh, our Espresso Maker uh, project. So if you didn't have a project ready to go, though, to start off with just uh, base SOLIDWORKS files, is that just file open? or that's you've, you've got a few different ways you can do it. So you saw the screen when I started there, I had a whole bunch of black space. Um, I can drag the assembly right into that black space. It's going to start up a new project for me. Um, I can also hit new project, uh, and under my model tab, I can just go to import model. Okay, and I can grab my model from here. And in fact, uh, if I do that now, Here's my, my SOLIDWORKS assembly, import it in. Uh, you've got some settings when you go to actually import in your SOLIDWORKS files. Okay, so uh, the first kind of settings here, um, auto sizing our model to our environment, um, part grouping. Um, if you're bringing in SOLIDWORKS files, automatic. Leave it at automatic, Visualize is very good at interpolating uh, SOLIDWORKS files. Okay, and you also see that there's this monitor file option, okay? So remember that, because I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Um, and that, that is an important part of Visualize, and that's, uh, that controls our, our CAD Live Update options. Okay, but you can see we've got appearances, environments, and decals along the top here. So Visualize is not only bringing in your geometry, it's also bringing in any appearances that you've already applied to, to your parts in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it's bringing in any environments that your part was in, inside, any HDR environments your part was in inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, and it's bringing in any decals that you've mapped to any faces. Okay. That's good to know. So if you have done work um, in SOLIDWORKS already using Photo V360, you can leverage a lot of that data. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Great. Um, Easy transition. And we can also choose. We can say, I don't want to bring these in. Right? So we have a choice. Um, we can bring them all in. We can bring none of them in. Okay? So uh, because I already have a model in here, I'm going to cancel out of this. Uh, and... You know, here's, a, here's our model, right? So we've imported it in. You know, it, it looks pretty good right off the bat. Um, just with, if I go to my appearance tab, you know, these are all of the, um, the pre-applied uh, appearances uh, that were applied in SOLIDWORKS that were imported into Visualize. So uh, the first thing that you're going to do when you start up a model inside of uh, Visualize is you're going to notice, um, how the heck do I move this thing around? Um, if you're used to using SOLIDWORKS, uh, you're probably used to using your mouse, and you're probably used to using your mouse button to rotate and tumble. It's a little different in Visualize at the moment. Uh, so we, the Alt tab is, is king here, 
or sorry, the Alt key. So if I hold down Alt and I left click, this is going to rotate and tumble my model. So if you learn nothing more today, the Alt key is the one to remember. Yes, right? Absolutely. Because I, rem I remember when I first started using it, I didn't know that. And it was, I'm like, oh, this is foreign. I can't even rotate stuff. Yeah. Yeah, right? So it's a little bit different, but uh, you know, it'll probably change over time. But for, for the time being, just remember the Alt key. Absolutely. And if I Alt right click, it's going to zoom in and out. Uh, if I Alt hold down my mouse roller button, it's going to pan. And then I can scroll. My scroll button is going to change my perspective. Um, now, if that's a lot to remember, which it kind of is, um, I can always hit F12 on my keyboard at any time. It's going to give me all the hot keys and all the visualize. So if I ever need to go back and say, man, how do I do that again really quick? Um, I got a full list here that I can go through, and they're all categorical. Okay. Right, so if you can only remember one thing out of this webinar, yeah. maybe, F12. maybe F12 is the yeah. one to remember, right? Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Alt, alt can be secondary, F12 really important. Okay. Um, so and ironic, there's a hot key for all hot keys. That's, yeah, that's true. Um, and F12, again, will just hide that. Okay? Good to know. Oh, Absolutely. Okay, so uh, our CAD setup, you know, we've imported our part. Um, again, remember that monitor file because I'm going to come back to it in a little bit. Um, but the first thing that we want to do uh, is, you know, maybe go over some of our grouping options, right? So if we look at our, uh, what we uh, from SolidWorks would call our feature tree, uh, it's structured exactly the same as the feature tree inside of SolidWorks. We have all of our parts in here, right? We can select multiple parts if we want to and group them together in case we want to do any kind of movements. Uh, we can also, uh, if I go to uh, my part selection at the top here, I can select multiple parts and I can merge them. Okay? And what that's going to do is now if I apply a material to this, this panel, both panels are going to change automatically. So I know that I want both panels to always be the same material. Now that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, so again, we've uh, we've imported our geometry, right? We've kind of got this. Ah, you know, let's change our view a little bit here. Sure. So we can go into the appearances that have already been applied, and it's very easy to adjust these. So if I just click on this material here, looks like it's the satin finish aluminum. If I want to change the color, click on the color, and you're going to get instant visual feedback. Yeah, you're going to see exactly how that color is going to look, and it's going to start re-rendering inside of your viewing window right away. Okay, uh, I can always go back to the original color, uh, and you know I have some options as well as far as material roughness. So you know, let's say this might be in a very dark setting, and I want to be able to have high reflectivity on the panels. I can bring my roughness right down, and you can see in real time how we're getting a much glossier finish. Right, same thing if it were in a very bright setting, we could bring our roughness up and kind of give it a little bit of a satin finish, right? So super quick material manipulation, and that's just of, of existing materials. Right? So uh, in this particular case, uh, we brought our model in. Maybe we want to see some conceptual models uh, because we're not quite sure uh, the color of the side panels that we want to go with yet. Um, so what we can do here is we can leverage uh, kind of a, a really handy pro feature, which is a, a visualized professional feature, uh, which is configurations. Okay, so um, we can say, you know, here's our first configuration. This is our orange one, you know, and this is kind of our starting one. It's like this is, you know, we like it, but we're not sure if we really want to go with it yet. Uh, but what we really want to do uh, is here, if we just copy and paste, you can see, it's that easy to, to, to duplicate our material. And we can just say, we want to go with more of a stealth look. And right, let's go with more of like a charcoal. And if I apply that, I just drag it, drop it, it's updated that material for me. Okay. And, oh, in fact, I think I did that backwards. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Uh, so right now charcoal is going to be orange, and orange is going to be charcoal. Um, but uh, that's the that, point is that you can have multiple. Exactly, we can show. We, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, I'm uh, my my semantics today are not great. Uh, 
but we can have multiple configurations. We can show the model in different views. And again, with Professional, when we go to render these things out, uh, we have the option uh, to, be, to render out all configurations. So we could have five or six different iterations of this, um, and it's not going to be an issue. It's not like we have to render one, wait for it to finish, render the next configuration, wait for it to finish. We can do it all at once. Um, and of course, another great pro feature inside of Visualize Pro is the queue. So we can stack all of our renders. We don't have to start them right away. So we can say, this one's good, moving on to the next project. Uh, then when we go for lunch or we go home, start the render, and you let it do its thing. By the time you come in the next day or the time you get back for lunch, from lunch, all your renders are complete. Hopefully. So there's a number of productivity tools right, oh, in, uh, in Visualize Professional. So, uh, so you saw the, the ease of material um, manipulation, but really the configurations is limited to the, that uh, Visualize Pro. Right? So there's a lot of con uh, productivity tools in, the, in that uh, Pro option that's uh, worth considering. Absolutely. So uh, the next thing would be highlighting uh, using some of the camera tools and some of the scene tools to really make our image pop. So right now, uh, you know, we've got it looking pretty good. We're pretty happy with the way yeah, it so looks. Visualize, uh, um, so visualize is a new product released this year. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Keep, carry on. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so we can start getting into our other tabs here. We've, we've seen our model. We've seen our appearance tabs. Um, now we can go into our scene tabs, right? So you can see these are the scenes uh, that were brought in from SolidWorks. You can see we've got our demo scene. We've got a, we've got a little plate here that we're using. Um, and actually, if I go into my library tab, this houses everything um, that I have in my library. This houses all my scenes, all my appearances, um, everything. Uh, and the really cool thing about that is I have local scenes and I have cloud scenes. So I have access to the cloud database in, in, uh, from uh, mysolidworks.com, uh, and they're constantly adding new materials and new scenes that uh, can be downloaded right within the application and used. So if I go to my environments, let's just apply one and see how it makes things change here. Uh, let's say Airstrip. Let's say we want to put this espresso maker on an Airstrip. If I drag and drop it into my view, right, you can see how the lighting changes on my model. Uh, and this is because it's using an HDR image to light the model, which meaning uh, there are light spots and there are dark spots. It's kind of like a big sphere around the model. And the light spots are being taken as uh, a sense, essentially light emission and projection onto the model. So you get that real, really realistic um, look of the model in that particular environment. Now, in this case, I probably wouldn't use this environment. Um, I could see what else I had. You know, I could have, oh, I've got a photo shoot environment. I could drag that in and I could drop it in. Uh, and that's going to manipulate, manipulate the way that the light hits my model. Uh, and I could always go back to my scene tab. You can see I've got everything. It's almost like a history of the scenes that I've applied here. And I can go back to them at any time, right? Even if I say I wanted to go to Chrome Studio. In fact, I don't mind the way that one looks. So maybe I'll stick with Chrome Studio. Uh, and then cameras, right? So by default, uh, when you start up a project inside of Visualize, uh, it sets a default camera for you. Uh, just like with materials, Control-C, Control-V, I can quickly create a new camera. Okay, I can name it if I want to. Um, let's name this one post-processing, which is a little bit of foreshadowing. We might be doing some post-processing soon. All right. So on this camera here, you can see I've got a whole bunch of different camera options. I can control where it's going to be. And I mean, this is exactly the same as using the Alt keys, except doing it in absolute forms uh, and sliders. But I do have some post-processing options. Um, these are available in, in, in the Pro Suite. Uh, and if I just enable them, um, I can really make this image pop. I can add some vignette. Right? I can adjust the exposure of the image. Right? I can also put a color filter. Maybe I wanted more of a sepia feel. Do like a little bit of like an orange, right? So really modify the way that the, the, that the image looks um, and only modify it on that camera. So I can have a ton of other cameras um, set up and ready to go. I can turn this off and on anytime I want to. Uh, and uh, it's, 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 it's just a, it's a, it's a great uh, option to really add that extra something to, uh, uh, to your model. I might have a situation where I want to really highlight something on my model, right? 
again, let's control C, control V, and create another camera. Um, and we'll call this depth. Okay. Uh, so maybe this, uh, this nice chrome bar right here, maybe this was a new addition to this particular build uh, to eject our coffee pods, right? We really want to highlight it. Um, so what we can do is we can kind of zoom in on it, right? Well, get to where we want it. That looks pretty good. Right? And if we really wanted to draw attention to this bar, uh, we could go through and we could use our depth of field options. Right? So we just turn on depth of field, hit a little eyeball over here, and say focus on the bar. Okay? And what you'll see when it starts rendering the bar is in focus. Everything out, it, everything else, depending on how far away from the bar it is, uh, is slightly out of focus. So it really draws your attention in, right? Just like if we were to create another camera and change our focus to the grill, right? So with one click, we can shift where our focus is. So very cool options. Um, and again, just like with configurations uh, available in Professional, when I render out, if I've got a ton of different cameras that I've added in, uh, camera angles, um, you know, close-up shots, uh, cutaways, anything like that, um, I can render out all my cameras all at once. So I don't have to go to each camera and render them one at a time. Okay. So some huge time savings in the Professional um, as well. Um, and of course, uh, within the rendering, I've, I've got several different options as well. I can change my, uh, my resolution size. Um, I can change my print size. I can choose on what style uh, of render that I go with. And I can also choose whether or not I want to use GPU or CPU. You know, what do we see today? We saw importing of the CAD, CAD data, you know, getting those settings in, uh, bringing those into, uh, into SolidWorks or sorry, in SolidWorks Visualize, um, being able to easily apply, create, manipulate your own appearances and scenes. Um, and now it's time for Scott East Pro Tip of the Day. All right. Before we do the Pro Tip of yeah. the Day, can, is, can we maybe get a summary of like what we see as kind of the key capabilities of, of Pro? Do we have that in the slide deck somewhere? Um, yeah, I think so. Let's see. Oh, here it is. There we go. Right. So, um, so just to summarize, you know, there's lots of capabilities of, of um, Visualize Professional, but we tried our best to kind of summarize it into key areas. Um, so trying to break it down into four key, ca uh, four key categories. Um, in Visualize Pro, you do have the capability, in our, in our opinion, to create even better looking images. So some of the things we saw there, like advanced lighting and the post-processing, really help with that. Um, you do have the ability to create animations, like you can even move the components through the animation and, and very easy to manipulate the cameras and all the lighting in the animations. Also one-click buttons for animation, so great stuff there. Um, you can produce interactive uh, web content, which is very unique to this, uh, this offering, uh, which is it's just amazing on, online. Um, and there's, uh, you can work in higher productivity using configurations and the queue. Um, that's a huge advantage if you do a lot of these renderings. It's, it's worth it just in the time savings. So what are we going to focus on with Scott E's Pro Tip of the Day? Let's see which one of these three we're going to cover today. It's going to be easily produce interactive web content. Very okay. cool. I'm happy you picked that one because this is one of my favorites. Absolutely. So with Visualize, we have the option uh, and the ability uh, with the professional version to be able to click or to be able to create um, Images that we can rotate um, by clicking and rotating have a more of, a, of an emotional connection with because we can actually rotate uh, the model uh, and we can embed these into our websites and uh, and into our you know HTML5 rich content. Um, so let's just go over uh, how to create these. So there's there's two types of interactive content that we can create uh, inside of Visualize. Uh, we can create uh, what's called a VR. Uh, which is essentially uh, being able to look at a product from the outside and rotate it. Um, and we can make uh, a panorama, which is being inside of an essentially an interior room um, and being able to rotate um, 
the uh, the view angle and, and see the entire kind of 360 of a room, kind of like a virtual tour of the room. Uh, and how we do that is the first thing that we always want to do uh, is make sure that when we rotate our model that everything that we want to see uh, in the VR is still going to be in our camera view when we rotate. Okay. So this, I mean, this is the view from our camera. We're like the director. We're looking right into the lens. So what, what we see is what we're going to get. Um, and when we want to create the VR, we can just go into the render area, or the, the output tools, and change our output mode to VR. Okay? And you're going to see some options here. You're going to see start and end angles, uh, and you're going to see orbits. So the start angle and the end angle, that's going to be your, your kind of uh, angle of view, how, how much you're going to be able to rotate your angle uh, when you create the VR. Okay, so um, the higher the angle, the more ro uh, vertical rotation that you're going to, to allow. Uh, the number of orbits, orbits are going to be kind of how smooth the transition is going to be in the horizontal. Um, so the more orbits, the, smooth, the smoother the VR, uh, but the longer the, uh, the render time. So if you have a super powerful graphics card, um, maybe it's not a big deal. Um, I, have, I generally keep it at 8, and, uh, and I find that it's not... It's not a big deal. Um, and essentially, just to give you an idea of what that's like, um, I've got a VR here kind of ready to go. So uh, this is a VR. You can see I can just grab it. I can manipulate my uh, my uh, my render any way I want. I can see On the, the screen sharing, it's not looking quite as smooth as you're showing it there. Do you want to go maybe slightly oh, I'll slower? I'll go a little bit slower. I can tell you it's very smooth. It's like butter. It's like, like butter. <laughs> Uh, and it, 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 it's a very cool experience because wherever I want to see on the model, I can easily rotate and I can see. Um, and, you know, it gives you a more hands-on experience with your product, right? And, it's, and it's, again, it's very easy to do. And this is something that you can use at the marketing stage. Uh, this is something that you can use uh, in a product table on your website. This is something that you can send out to managers to say, kind of, here's our concept. Give, give it a whirl. See what it's like, right? Uh, most people have a browser. Most people go on the internet, so um, you know there's no compatibility issues or anything like that. Uh, it's um, it's a very very cool and innovative tool. Uh, I personally think that this is the closest to actually physically touching a product. It, right? It, is that I, fair I, to say? I, I, I would say that that's a fair uh, that's a fair assessment. Yeah, the idea is if you want somebody to invest in in a product without it being you know, physically available in front of them. So really with sales through the web, I personally see this being the, the best possible option. No, right? absolutely. It might have other downsides, like I guess video has some practicality to it, but it's so nice to be able to rotate around freely. Absolutely. And um, again, I mentioned that we have uh, VRs and uh, we also have panoramas. So this is actually um, a panorama um, that was done by Bombardier, uh, who's, who you saw works visualize. Um, and you can see, and I'll go slow, um, you know, we've got like a full bird's eye view um, of the inside of this luxury airliner. Uh, this, I've actually, I've put this in the Javelin budget for, for sorry, I didn't tell you that, but, um, you know, we got to get around. We're important people, us, uh, us application engineers. So um, added this into the budget, and this was really the selling feature. You know, this really, uh, it, it gives, gives you that hands-on experience. You can zoom, you can pan. Uh, and it kind of gives you that virtual tour feel, right? So just like the VRs for the outside going around, um, we would just place our camera on the inside or in the interior of something, and then we would uh, render out a panorama. Um, and we, uh, we're also the first uh, reseller in the world to offer training on this. Is that yeah, correct? Yes, as, as, fa as far as I know. Uh, we are, we're definitely the first in North America. I think we were the first in, in the world too. I don't think anybody else has one yet. Yeah. So we, uh, we've developed our own content and own uh, course for this. Um, and it's actually two days worth of content. There's actually quite a bit more to the tool than we covered today um, to make sure that you're, you can, again, create the most stunning images possible um, and learn all about this other content, like the interactive web content and videos as well. So uh, we do have an uh, in-classroom course in a couple weeks. Right. Yep. Yep. It's coming. It's coming up quick. All right. So there's. So uh, I think we still have some spots available in that. So if you're if you're interested in sending somebody, uh, please let us know. 
Um, and then into July, we're offering the same course uh, through our Jolt format. So we're spreading it at the content over three days instead of two. So, uh, so less time uh, per day. Um, and, uh, but you get, uh, get all the same course material and, uh, and exercises and instruction. Perfect. So, uh, so that uh, wraps up the content we were planning. We do have a number of questions that we're going to answer. Um, if you didn't want to stick around for questions, I um, wanted to thank you for attending today. Uh, sorry we went minorly over, over butt time there. Um, sorry, guys. I, think we I guess I, I get so hour. excited about things. I know, I know. That's, that's okay. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Um, so have a great day. And, uh, and yeah, we're going to have a quick look at the questions, and then we'll see what we can answer. Um, verbally, uh, some of them we might answer in writing, but most of them we'll try to knock off verbally here. Let's just give, give us a chance to review, um, so we'll get, get back in, uh, in 10 or 20 seconds, okay?